The Persnickety Witch of Fittyman Creek by Gay Pollinger, Chapter 23. Each pew of the small church was occupied with wedding guests from all over the United States. A light conversational buzz filled the room. The exquisite stained glass windows glimmered with the reflection of candles. Poinsettias lined the center aisle and the platform. In the back and the front of the church, several Christmas trees were decorated with strings of white lights. It was enchanting. The church organist played several familiar melodies. And then the back door creaked and opened. The crowd turned. There they were, looking exactly like royalty. Pearl and Jefferson stood side by side with an aura of happiness surrounding them. Jefferson was extremely handsome with his thick, wavy white hair and dark eyes. He was dressed in a three-piece black suit, starched white shirt, and black tie. Pearl was radiant. A single strand of pearls circled her neck, and a small pearl cluster earrings had been fastened to her ears. Her hair was in a lovely chignon at the nape of her neck. Today there were no wisps escaping from beneath the straw hat. She wore a floor-length, long-sleeved, winter-white, velvet A-line dress. White fur was on the scoop neckline. She put her hands into a furry winter-white muff. She was extraordinarily beautiful. She glowed, and there was blushing color on her cheeks. Her sapphire eyes sparkled. Ready? Jefferson whispered to her. She nodded once. The music began, and they walked down the short aisle. The minister waited for them at the front of the church. From the minister's welcoming comments to the vows to the vinyl words, you may kiss the bride, all these seemed to me like seconds and eons at the same time. My memories flew through my brain of my sick mother and meeting Tom, having my own babies, meeting Pearl, and of all things I had learned about my past and this glorious woman who is now my mother. I heard them say their vows, and I wiped a tear that wanted to edge out of my eye. I watched Jeff as he tenderly kissed Pearl. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs., Jefferson Davis Easterbrook. There was roaring, a roaring applause. The organ began to play triumphantly, and they again walked the aisle, this time arm in arm. I just sat there and grinned until Tom squeezed my hand. Come on, Luce, it's time to join the receiving line. We found our places beside the newlyweds in the lobby and greeted the guests one by one until the sanctuary was empty. Downstairs, the fellowship hall was enchanting. The lighting was low. Votive candles had been placed strategically around the room. Chairs had been placed in semicircles for gathering and conversation, and a decorated tree stood in one corner. Tulle had been draped across the ceiling, offering a dreamlike appearance. A long table had been set up along the side. It held a crystal-footed punch bowl filled with a Christmas punch that Pearl had created a three-tiered chocolate wedding cake, because chocolate was just favorite, and small crystal bowls overflowed with mints and nuts and crystal dessert plates and silverware at the ready. Gail served punch, I cut the cake. Music was being played on a record player. Someone had hung sprigs of mistletoe in all the doorways. Pearl and Jefferson moved easily from group to group, stopping briefly to chat. Pearl had been a resident of Fittyman for a long time, and she was well-loved. Jefferson had been around enough during the courtship, so he had gotten to know many folks in the area. Well, everyone, this has been a wonderful, momentous occasion for us, and we'd like to thank you for sharing it with us. How often do you get married at our ages? But right now, we've got a train to catch, Jeff announced to the crowd. We'll see you when we return from our honeymoon.